This is the year of a dragon, 2012. So, 2012, I heard so many stories. What is actually going to happen? The air world is coming to an end. And I said, wow, really? I never heard about that. It actually is a transition or a transformation that's happening now. So I was very annoyed. And I wanted to say, OK, I'm coming out of the pedestal of the museums and the collectibles, all the art collectors, and going to the real people. And I really from deep of my heart, feel I'm among real people. I love you all. I love you all so much. Your vibration, your energy, it's just so beautiful. You are now real people. You are the next generation that's going to help this world transform. Maybe till now, You've been considered like an outcast or a black sheep. By the way, I'm also a monastery dropout. <coughs> so His Holiness Karmapa and all the lineage actually sees me also as a black sheep. I remember when I was 15, I was called by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and I said, Romeo, do not forget your duty or your sangha. You must start your monastery again. I still have 80 of your monks living with me here in Dharamsala. So as a revol revolutionary or revol like a black sheep with a big joint in my hand, I arrived in front of His Holiness. And I said, Your Holiness, for 16 lifetime, I've spent from morning till night going, <laughs> And I came to the conclusion 50% of them are asleep, 25% want to learn. But I really, in my spiritual journey, I found out even if I'm enlightened, even if I have found the way of light, I cannot take any one of you, any of my most beloved students, or anybody. You all have to find your own way. So this lifetime, Your Holiness, I want to be free. In this lifetime, my monastery will have no walls. I want to go out in the world and touch every heart if possible. I want to have the power to love every single human being I meet in my life. So I am out, out of the monastery. I came to the West. I met the most amazing teachers in my life. I had a dream as a young, young dreamer of being a cowboy. So I started smoking Marlboros, thinking I could be a cowboy. That didn't work. And then I was brought in front of a friend of mine, brought me to Kansas City. And I met the most amazing gunman ever. And he was called William S. Burroughs. And it was his rest of history. He was showing his whole life's work in the museum there in Kansas. And he saw my face in a monk robe and said, forget the soul. I want to go shooting with this man. So he took me out shooting shooting targets, of course. And he was there loading his gun, and finally he hands me a, a loaded gun. But 
when I went to this target to pull the trigger, I just couldn't pull the trigger. So I went back to William and says, you've given me a loaded gun. I feel I could kill anyone, even you. But I don't have the guts to pull the trigger. How do you pull the trigger of the gun? And William is loading his pistol and saying, oh. So after two, three minutes of thinking, he says, Romeo, when the target and your mind is one, go shoot your good, pull the trigger. And that's exactly what I did. And my first shot was bullseye. He came running. I said, wow, are you sure you never shot before? He says, no. He says, I'll give you a more interesting pistol to play with. So he gave me a 45 Magnum. And said, now be very careful. This one really has a hit back. So I was really scared now. What is this gun going to do? Is it going to jump out of my hand and shoot everywhere? So I went there and went, bam, 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 bam. Because the reaction kept me pulling the trigger. And it was all the chakras of the human, all our chakra points. So he came running and says, wow, I would hang out with you any day. So that was one venture. Then I meet again His Holiness in New York, opening Tibet House. And it had all the medical paintings. And I again went to His Holiness and said, I need your blessing. And His Holiness says, you have my blessing. Yes, the Dharma will fly to the West. So really, as an organized religion, I came to a conclusion. I'm a born Hindu, brought up Catholic, or then as a 17th reincarnate Buddhist monk, and married to an Irish Protestant. So if you ask me about my organized religion, I'm confused. But you guys all talk my religion, the language of love. That is the most important religion one can have. Try to get in tune with the religion that an unborn baby has. That before you're born, before you had this karmic body, what religion did you have? Oh. And I remember calling Rita. She says, what will I talk about? What will I say to the people? She says, it's all about alchemy and transformation. So about alchemy, alchemy as described in the dictionary, you could sit down there, Shok, if you want. Yeah. It's about turning base metal to gold. And I was in Hawaii in a thing called Alchemist, another festival. And here again, we are again talking about alchemy. So really for me, Alchemy is transforming human beings who are scared, who are frustrated. I heard today, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Now, I would love to try and transform that, that consciousness into pure being. And it's called body of light. My last body of work I did was the Lukhan Temple. These are now images His Holiness has in his sacred temple. His Holiness has a sacred temple 
where he goes and practice Jokhan. And it was only accessible to him and his tutors. And after finishing that painting, I suddenly realized, wow, we are not just human beings with skin and bones. We actually are made out of light as well, body of light. So one of the things I would like you to see with my paintings, like this one, for example, is if you were to describe the mother's love, how would you describe it? A mother must have 1,000 arms, 1,000 eyes, and 1,000 heads. That's how much love your mother has for you. So in, in somehow, alchemically, or in my process as an artist, I've tried to paint your higher self. I believe every single one of you have a potentiality to be enlightened. In fact, really, you're all enlightened. You've just forgotten it because your mind is so busy. The system has created your mind so busy. But luckily, you know, you're trying to break away the limitation. Take ayahuasca. Come to a festival like Boom. Be a part of a tribe. Break all rules. When you actually break all the limitations of life, then you will understand your whole self. Oh. So I would like to share with you now some of my paintings. I had a vision. I had a vision for many, many, many years of seeing a world of total compassion where we are all living like divinities, where everybody is like gods and goddesses with pure mind, always giving and loving. Life is not about what is it in for me or what can I get out of life. It's more about what can I give. How can I be of service in this planet? So would you like to say something, Soph? Well, I hope. You can tell me, tell them about the book of Thunder Dragon. Huh? Okay. All right, let me let me open the painting. So this this is a tube now I've carried all around the world. You don't want to talk. <laughs> and by the way, if any of you have any question, please feel free to ask. Hey, 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 oh, 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 oh,
ho 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 om hum hum om hum he he ho om ho 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 om ha ho om ha om vajra guru padma sri ho 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 so if you were wondering what i was chanting there is the mantra of guru padma sambhava and it's really a self empowering mantra is to empower every one of you Now talking about enlightenment the rainbow body this is buddha amitabha buddha of boundless light when he saw so much suffering his heart chakra and his crown chakra opened and from his tear was born the bodhisattva of all compassion and the paints i use are all ground up minerals blue is ground up lapis red is cinnabar gold is actual gold dust green is malachite and this is what it looks like here let me shimmer it so if you look at the light here let go when you are giving love from your heart and thinking love this is what it looks like okay
Which one is this now? Oh, I want the white. That's Yamantaka there. He's the destroyer of the fear of death. If any of you have a fear of death, or I heard today in one of the talks, I'm scared of, you know, I want the world free of death. Just a talk before. Well, none of you have to be scared of death, says Yamantaka. He's the wrathful form of Buddhist of all wisdom, Manjushri. He has 18 arms, 18 body, and he holds on all the death body. So basically, as Brian Geisen said, we're all here to go. And really, in, in Buddhist philosophy also, they say, once you're born, you have to die. But the secret is, you actually don't die. Your body dies. You're like pure light. This is what I found out in my spiritual journey. You actually don't die. So to find out, to understand that, now just take your consciousness to a point. Visualize who is actually listening to me. Go deep inside and forget all this thing, the sound that you hear from me. But just focus on who is actually listening to you, to this presentation. So you really are not really your physical body. So for the question, answer of death, Yamantaka says, you never die. You're always alive. Your physical body changes all the time. And for that, I spent many, many years on a cemetery trying to understand what was the difference between your body and you. Because I saw corpse in the banks of the Ganges, which had everything you need to be alive. The heart, the lung, the kidneys, the hands, everything. But it was not alive. And the only thing that was missing was breath, known as prana. And that breath comes from the plant kingdom. That's how we are connected to the plant kingdom. So we are really connected. In the spirituals only, you are all actually the universe. Every single one of you. Every single one of you is part of this universe. So in nanotechnology wise, you are all very important. You all create this universe. So if you want peace, find peace of mind first. And in fact, to find peace of mind, if you really, really study and understand yourself, that really you yourself are always in peace. It's the mind. Your mind keeps you totally busy all the time. And the soul, the spirit is just pure light, is what I found out. And one of the things now, as we saw about the painting before, Buddha Amitabha, when he saw so much suffering, he cried. And out of his teardrop, white Tara was born. Om Tara to Tara to the Swaha. So this is what she looks like. Hey, 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 oh. Oh, 
Tara tu Tara tu Tara tu Re Swaha. So here she's compared to the healing lotus. She's my favorite. She's my favorite deity, the goddess of active compassion. I think it's the feminine energy that's going to save this planet. It is the goddesses that's going to save this planet. She has a third eye of enlightenment. Her hands have eyes, showing that everything she does, she sees and does. And eyes in her feet, symbolizing that every step she takes, she sees and takes. So maybe show this side too. Pull that up. Hey, oh, 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 is the cosmos of White Tara. White Tara as a cosmos in a rainbow form, emitting energy of love. Just put it on there. One more. There's one more left. That's all right, we'll find out. Right. <laughs> This is how the mandala looks like. Yeah, hold that. And this is how the mandala of White Tara looks like. Her heart chakra is open. So talking about art from the heart, this is all about the art from the heart. Everything really begins in the heart. You know, talking about limitation, when you start seeing beyond your eyes, when you start hearing beyond your ears, when you start feeling beyond your skin, when you start smelling beyond your nose, beyond your five senses is the universe. You know very well that dogs can hear sounds we don't. So there are sounds we cannot hear. There are things we don't see. So when you develop senses in the heart, she teaches that you see the whole universe. The whole universe becomes one. That's, that's good. Oh, Now this one is actually in my new book, and maybe you can see it being projected here too. It's known as the 35 Buddhas of Confas Confession. So once again, in Buddhism, in the last millennium, 
there was only one Buddha. And then I came across this vision of 35 confession Buddhas. Then in the last millennium, I actually was the last speaker for Deepak's party or the seminar, what he did for the millennium. And I explained, in the last millennium, there is only one Buddha. Hopefully, in the coming millennium, we'll see thousands of Buddha. And really, in my spiritual journey, I came to realize that every single human being is a Buddha. Every single one of you actually have that quality of being enlightened. In fact, you're really enlightened. You've just forgotten it, as I was saying earlier. And this is the enlightened one. He's touching Mother Earth as a witness, saying, OK, my physical body is made out of five elements. I am different from my physical body. And that is the meaning of this painting. Okay, we can roll that. Now, in life, we come across a lot of obstacles, many obstacles. And this one is Vajrakilaya that destroys all obstacles. So, if you have any obstacles, by the way, you know, a lot of people. Sometimes they ask, what is the meaning of your painting? I said, to be very simple, these are all mirror images of your higher self. So when you look at my painting, visualize yourself as looking in a mirror. So if you have obstacle, transform to this image, and all obstacles will pass. So he's, he's known as Vajrakilaya, destroyer of all obstacles. So if anybody is giving you a hard time, ask them if you want them to see this form of you. This one is usually seen an inner altar of a monastery, where it's seen in the candlelight. So the black background disappears, and the figure just simmers in the light of a butter lamp. Hey, hey, oh, 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 oh. Yamantaka, like the one we saw projected, is the smell of virgin, Shetang. Once again, the destroyer of fear of death. Okay, we can take that down. That's good. That is Rahula, destroyer of all ignorance. 
Nobody escapes his eyes. He has a raven head to cover the sky and nine wrathful heads and eyes all over the body and a serpent body. So even in the underground, you know, he's keeping an eye on. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. And the next one is on relationship. I feel very blessed. Actually, I chose the path of a householder this time in a relationship. I found out that a good relationship is worth more than all the gold in the world. So this is all painted in gold. And it, it represents the sacred union of the mother and father. It is the sacred union of the mother and father that actually manifests you. So I painted it all in gold, trying to explain to the modern world that a good relationship is worth more than all the gold in the world. I never understood divorce and fighting over divorce and money and all that. Because when you are in love, really nothing matters. Time doesn't exist. Things doesn't exist. Anyway, in this lifetime, I'm very lucky to find somebody like Sophie. And really, all of you also, one of my biggest messages would be is fall in love. Be in love. And you are always free of all suffering. I remember William Burroughs sent me a, a Christmas card saying, what is love? And he wrote, the most natural painkiller there is. He was about pain, about being heroin, shooting heroin and all that. But I feel it has, love has the answer for, to free you from all sufferings. If you are in love, if you actually experience love, love, now I'm talking unconditional love, not love with a five mile long list. So that is the painting on love. So after painting these special paintings of His Holiness the, on Enlightenment, I actually felt like, wow, it was a real release of energy. And I wrote a poem, and it goes like this. It's titled, The Rainbow Body. I wrote, my body has transformed to a rainbow body, body of light. Maya, the illusory world, tries to grasp onto me like dust particles try with a beam of light. 
I have lost myself to find it in every single person I meet in my life. And I said, wow, I feel enlightened. This is what I feel like being enlightened. So I painted a painting based on enlightenment. And this is what it looks like. When you are enlightened, it's like a doorway opening to a reality where every single human being you meet in your life is like a Buddha. Everybody's enlightened. And here's Sakyamuni, the enlightened one. He found out his physical body is made out of five elements. His consciousness is light. So you are all light. You all have a body of light. And when you actually are aware of that, in your life, there will be no darkness. You'll always live in light. You can move it down. So this is the concept. Like your mind, like when we take ayahuasca, or take some of the visionary art or you know medicine as we call it we open into different concepts when you are on a spiritual journey and you're in search of spirituality suddenly it opens suddenly you feel like wow i see light and in that moment every single human being translates as a buddha so each one of these represents a buddha here so that's the paintings. That's what I paint. <laughs> so what else? What else can I say but maybe explain a few mantras I chant all the time? Going, oh. Om ha hum, om ha hum. So will you repeat after me? Om ha hum. E om. Om. Om ha hum, om ha hum. I can't hear you. Oh. Om Haum, Om, Om, Om Haum, Om, Om Haum, Om. So one of the things that I suddenly came into spiritual journey, in my spiritual journey, is is actually the upper three chakras, Om, the crown chakra. Ha, the throat chakra, and home, the heart chakra. So how you think, what you speak, and how you feel, this is what makes your universe. So my request or my message would be, think well-being think well-being of not only of yourself but of the whole human race speak well-being speak well-being not of only yourself but the whole human being rest all the human beings feel feel well-being feel well-being of not only of yourself, but of the whole human race. And your whole world will transform to nothing 
but well-being. You will have no other choice but to be well-being. And that is alchemy. That is transformation. So think, speak, and feel well-being of the whole human race. And I really would like to thank Artur. I don't know where Artur is. Artur is here. Rita and all the Boom family to make this kind of a festival a possibility because this is the new norm. This is the new thing of the human race, how you are. I think you all have to go into mainstream. I saw earlier about the uh, the what you, Wall Street, you know how they took over, uh, occupying Wall Street. So I think now it is time for the Boom family to actually occupy the whole universe, the whole world out there, the way you feel. We have all come here to create this special, beautiful atmosphere where there is unconditional love and total well, you know, there's like look out, everybody's caring for everybody. I feel so safe here. It's like we have created a, a new human race, alliance of new human race. But now this as an example, if we can create out there in the world, I think this planet definitely have hope. I remember in New York, I went to this screening of a documentary called Inconvenient Truth. And my friend Paulette, who was hosting this, brought Al Gore and says, Romeo, this is Al Gore. He's the one who made the documentary. So he said, so Romeo, tell me what do you think? What do you think of the future of the planet? I said, well, there's a lot of truth in here. But one thing I came out is I'm very sad and unhappy because the planet is in such state. I asked him, have you ever sat in the sun? He says, yes. Do you feel hot when you sit in the sun? He says, yes. So what do you expect? Mother Earth has been sitting in the sun for so many billions of years. Global warming is not an issue. It is a change. We must learn to live with the change. The commercial crisis we are facing is a change that's happening. Now, this boom family energy is going to be the new human race. How we can support each other. How we can keep in touch with each other. And please, if any of you want to be friend, like I would like to, one of my greatest dream now is that because I have no monastery, I want to have a cyber space monastery. I want to build a monastery in cyberspace. So we can be in tune with a, just a touch button. So please befriend me on Facebook or track me down. And I would love to converse more. I mean, I cannot tell you all what I have in my head in one and a half hours. But I will slowly explain as I learn what I have learned. I don't come from an academic background. Like I told you, I am a monastery dropout. But yet, <laughs> I still paint these paintings. And I never had a teacher. Nobody taught me how to paint this. And my painting really is inspired by divinities among what I find in the human race. Every one of you have a purpose.
Every one of us have a purpose. My purpose in life is to awaken the divine in every single person I meet in my life. Every one of you are divinities. Just realize it. And after you realize it, that's not enough. Go out and awaken the divine in every single person you meet in your life then suddenly you'll be living among divinities. Like in the Boom Festival. Everybody left their job behind, their time, their work, and said, we're going to go celebrate. And goddesses. We're all gods and goddesses. Life is to celebrate. And I'm here in person to remind you that life is about living, not about solving problems and issues. Om Ha Hom. How you think, what you speak, how you feel. These three upper chakras are the spiritual chakras. As a celibate monk, that's where my consciousness lived. And that's what projects your universe. How you think, what you speak, and how you feel. And the secret as a, a monk or in a monastic life, like I said, think well-being, speak well-being, and feel well-being of the whole human race. It's very difficult, but it is possible. And the other chakras are concerned about maya, the material world. And I really, really have no words to express how fortunate and happy I feel to be standing here in front of you all. Every meeting is a karmic reunion. So there must be some karma between you all, every single one of you and myself. Visualize, imagine, even if you had to say hello to every single human being in this planet, it will take you more than 10, 15 lifetimes. So when we meet in person, there is, it is a karmic reunion. And if you can understand this synchronicity in life and value every meeting you have with individual, then really, once again, your world will transform into a whole new meaning. Do not look for trouble God did not give you. The news, the media, the system, the culture. It is great to be a black sheep. You know, every single one of you are in one way a living example of freedom. Today in another workshop, I was sitting with a very dear friend of mine, Rita, who said, oh, I'm looking for freedom. Just wow. So freedom is a very interesting word. To be free, you have to break the boundaries of limitation. Let there be no rules in your life. No laws. Only with wisdom, you know, when you come to a cross, you know you, you're not supposed to jump off the cliff or you're not supposed to jump in front of a running car. This is common knowledge. I'm talking about just concept. See, we all are prisoners of our conceptual and intellectual mind. Try to take your consciousness beyond your conceptual and intellectual mind. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be in Boom. I'm really so happy to see so many different countries. And the choice ones out of there. I call them the enlightened ones. Every one of you, you have all 
something very special. You didn't want to wear the black suit and the black tie. So we want to find freedom. So really, one of my greatest dream is if you all can go out and really teach what you have, what you believe in. Because I really think this is the future. And I really love you. I love you so much. So if there is any question, please, I would love to answer any question. Anybody wants to ask anything? Third eye, yeah. That actually is Luke's painting, I think. Yes. I don't know. I haven't gone. I think that I have in the brochure, but you know, there are a few books. I have 14 books, the large ones, and 16 small ones, and 30 children's books, I think, which I got flown over from California. I said, you know, maybe if somebody wants to get a signature or want to remember Boom, I will sign them for them. And it will be a gift, what I have given. I'm here to give this message, this art. And my art really, to explain in very few words, is liberation through sight. So when you really see my painting, you actually feel finding your higher self. What is this? My autograph. Oh, autograph. <laughs> Why do you need my autograph when I'm here with you? I'll always be with you. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. I'll, I'll answer that. I'll just answer his question first. He asked me if I have come across any of my paintings from my past lives. Yes. I got actually from an antique dealer from Peking saying, we found one of your paintings and it weighs five tons and it's a kilometer long. So two lifetime ago, I actually had done another painting on enlightenment, how to achieve enlightenment. So it is a spiral. So the idea is to you know, meditate, take the consciousness in a certain stage, and you blindfold the man or the person who wants to go in, and we take them inside the spiral, and he walks through for a whole kilometer looking at all the different images, and all the images showed the whole Buddha's Ajanta tale, how he got enlightened, what his story was. And the idea was when they came out, he actually found out, or one found out, you are enlightened. But yes, if you go to the monasteries of Tibet, they are all over the place. If you go to His Holiness Monastery in Dharamsala, it's all over the place. And of course, in a couple of museums, like the British Museum in London, I'm the only living artist. The Victoria and Albert Museum. The Museum Gamay in Paris. LA County Museum in Los Angeles, Metropolitan Museum, New York, Natural History Museum, and many, many patrons, like George Harrison was a great patron of my work, and I got to meet all the Beatles, except John was already gone. But, you know, it's, it's out there, and it has been in somewhere always hidden. I'll tell you a very interesting story about my art, actually. 
I was in Deepak's one of the Southern Spirit. And one of the participants there came and says, Romeo, Romeo, I've got a very rich client for you. I says, wow, who? He says, doesn't matter. He, he's what we consider in America richer than God. So I, said, I got really excited. I was young. I was out there. You know, I'm a traveling gallery, by the way. You can only buy my painting on my back. <laughs> There's no agent or anything. So I, I arrived, and I arrived in New York. And I said, wow, this man, you know, wow, might buy a few paintings, pay bills. So I arrived half hour ahead. And I had all my paintings out in his conference room. And he suddenly walked in. He didn't walk in alone, but he came with six different secretaries. And we never had a conversation. And he had 15 minutes for me. But he was there 45 minutes. And before he got up, he said, I will take that one, that one. And this was Bill Gates, by the way. And I looked at Bill and said, I'm sorry, Bill. Actually, you cannot afford my paintings. So what do you mean? Because you have no time. You have no time. So really, like one of these paintings takes me one and a half years. That's another one of White Tara, the cosmos of White Tara, compassion. And now this, like if you really have time to understand and study, it will grow into you. You'll start feeling compassionate. Like if you start your day every day looking at this art and going out and projecting compassion, your world will transform in front of you. If you plant an apple tree, you will get apples, not oranges. So if you are projecting compassion, you will feel compassion back from the universe. So really, the universe is just the mirror of how you think, what you speak, and how you feel. If you are feeling happy, you'll see the whole world happy. If you are speaking happy thoughts, you'll only see happy thoughts. If you speak complaints and complaints, you'll only get complaints back too. So coming to this boom and having this, this evening, I would request every single one of you here to Practice, maybe for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, two hours, you grow it. Think well-being of not only of yourself, but the whole human race. Speak well-being of not only of yourself, but the whole, whole human race. And feel, feel well-being for not only to your, of yourself, but the whole human race. And then this world will transform in front of you. It's absolutely amazing. It's that simple. Oh, home, 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 home. home. And this is how simple it is. If you chant this every time when you have free time, Om, 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 Om Hum Oh 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 Om Hum Om 
Vajraguru Padma Siddhi 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 Om He Om Oh 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 Om 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 Vajra Guru Guru Padma Siddhi Om So this is a mantra I used to chant to all my students. I actually had a monastery of 5,000 students for 16 lifetime. Painting this art. Now it's changed. And now hopefully it will go to cyberspace. So what is the question you had? You forgot. <laughs> so that's, a, that's the thing about thought, see? Our mind. Our mind always have thought. So it really doesn't matter how, what you think about yourself, because it changes all the time. You know, what do you think, who you think you are? Or who you think other things you are? So if you want to free, free yourself from your mind, your intellectual and conceptual mind, every single one of you, every single one of you have a special quality has a unique quality. In the spiritual journey, in my spiritual journey, I suddenly came to realization, we are all one. We are all one. In different karmic bodies. And this is what BOOM is all about. The festival like BOOM. We come all here and try to create collectively an energy of love and compassion. So when you go out today, you know, just vibrate, vibrate love. And it's very simple. It's, you know, actually a scientist once showed to me when I explained to him. He says, wow, Romeo, what you explain can scientifically be proven. He says, what do you mean? He says, if you take a tuning fork, And, and you sing it. And if you bring another tuning fork next to it, the second tuning fork starts singing as well. So we are also tuning forks. We are also vibrating energy. You must have had experience in, in your life that sometimes some people walk in your room and you say, wow, or you so you meet somebody and you go hug them. You are so happy to see them. But some people, because there's, there's a compatible vibration there. But some people, you don't want to see them. Somebody walks in the wall and you suddenly say, oh my God. Because the vibration is wrong. So one of the secrets in life is if you can learn to vibrate love and compassion. There's so much, so much to talk about. I mean, the books, the Celestial Gallery explains about how this whole world is a celestial world. The goddess that I did was all about goddess energy and the enlightenment is based on totally, once again, this Buddha energy is really within you all. So is there any more question? OK, tell me. Uh, from the moment that I started studying the humans as a religion and uh, as, a, as a person, the, we are believing in something. All the nations are believing in Buddha, in, in, in Allah, in, Christ, in, in Christians. Do you do, do you don't I see something like this the people believing in something but as an energy 
not as a as a Quran, as a as a fa- fanatical uh, uh, direction to to become a pe- perfect person and be, be in the in the in the world with with uh, with nothing more on the, the pleasure. But on the world, they need to be difficult. The, the Buddhism, the, the, the people need to keep the diets and practice they, they mind to the, to, to the limits the, the possibilities, or the Christians, that they need to uh, well, have a good, a good life. What I do, I thing? was, I was a Buddhist for 16 lifetime, locked up in a monastery, as I was explained. And suddenly I came to realization, Buddha was not a Buddhist. He was a Hindu. Yes. And Jesus Christ was not a Christian. He was Jewish. And Mama never, never talks about any religion. So really, religion has been created. You know, enlightened being gave us truth. Somebody came in and said, okay, we can bottle this up and cash it in. This is why Vetakan is one of the most richest organization. Monasteries are all so rich. This is why I left the monastery, really. Materialism, as long as you are bounded by your mind, your conceptual or your intellectual mind, like any philosophy, any philosophies, you are not free. Be an empty glass so you can fill with wine or water or juice. This is what I teach my kids. I want to teach them every religion so they feel belonging to a mosque or a monastery or a Hindu temple or a church. Yes. So really, you know, here I think none of you really have a set religion. You're all free souls. I can feel it. As soon as I came to Boom, and just felt and saw the people, the dress, the way, the dance, the music, the vibration. I said, wow, this is the future of the human race. And really, I would like to go from one festival to another, slowly, really saying, okay, time to have collective force. You know, all the boom people, all the burning man people, everybody who have this feeling everybody who's been doing ayahuasca, every seekers. You know, you are all seekers. You're all looking for a new path. You're not happy. And that is evolution. We human beings are evolving. In my court, there's no rules. You're all free to be if you need anything. Yes. Well, I am not actually, (laughs) I never took ayahuasca. But I heard so much about ayahuasca. Pablo, you know, many things. I'm waiting to go to Brazil. But I did do DMT once. And it is opening up like I was showing you the Enlightenment man painting. It is opening different doors. But don't do too much of ayahuasca. I have a friend called Stuart Wall. He does ayahuasca every second day. And he's so paranoid, you know. I mean, to be very simple, ayahuasca is taking freedom from your everyday Maya world and is really cleaning your karmic body and finding your spiritual body. That's what the journey of ayahuasca is. Does that make sense? We take a lot of other different medicine in Tibet. I don't half time. I don't know what it is. You know, sometimes I get from monasteries. This is a medicine, and then I'm tripping out. <laughs> you know, I, I'm seeing Buddhas and all this <laughs> mad figures coming Arr! all over the places. You know, but yes, you know, any of this medicine like ayahuasca is interesting to open new doors in your mind, new concepts. It is showing you your capacity of thought pattern. 
is way beyond. So thought pattern is where it all lies. Like I was saying, how you think. Everything that we have in our head is like our brain is one big chemistry lab. You know, depending on the chemistry you do in your brain, you feel happy, unhappy, pain, uncomfortable, diseased. So if you can make good brain chemistry, like on a trip of ayahuasca, you're not thinking about your bills to pay or your anything about the material world. So it's really cleansing your spiritual self. Any drugs, any drugs. I even had to appear as Merlin for a guy called Kenkeji. He came with his magic box giving LSD everywhere. You know, and, and that LSD, I mean, one of my paintings is actually hanging on in Millbrook where LSD was found and tested. It was a drug used to really find enlightenment as a push button. I know Timothy Larry's wife, who actually is Uma's mom, <laughs> Uma Thurman's mom, and Sibyl Graf, all those great masters, all the Bitnik group, I had the opportunity to meet. Because I left my monastery. I met many musicians, many musicians, many actors, many gurus. But finally, I find boom. And really, this youth, the young age, you're all looking, searching. Once you find, take your path. Go live life happily. Not like, oh, we are a dropout. Oh, we are not accepted in society. No, let's create our new society. Let's create a society of love and compassion and enlightenment. We are really here for a very short time. In this short time, if we can leave something beautiful behind, a beautiful energy behind, then you have served the purpose of being born. So every single one of you, I feel, have a unique quality. Sit down. Some may be really good in singing. Some may be good in painting. Some may be good in talking. Some may be good in selling. Whatever makes you happy. Live life. Really, what the system has brainwashed you, the fashion, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The most important thing is love. If God was to appear tomorrow and ask me, what kind of boon would you like? I would ask him, oh, higher self, enlightened one. Give me the power to love every single human being like I love my wife, like I love my children, unconditionally. I really want to be able to love unconditionally. And that is the new evolution. We human beings are suddenly going to say, enough of this rat race, enough of this competition. In the games we play, is going to be Okay, everybody is a winner. Do I make sense? Yes. So really, I think you are all aware. I'm sure if I went and spoke, said the same thing to the bankers, they say, show me your credit. You know, and it's really, really, very interesting how we are the projector of our life. You, every single one of you, every single one of your life is exactly the way you want it to be. You wished for it. You are the creator. Okay. After this words, I, uh, I hear the ayahuasca is resetting like your brain. 
the things what you what you can what normal life or your psyche cannot give give to you giving you ayahuasca so p some people they are taking this this product to reset their brain to to make the 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 thoughts what are unable uh, for example the the uh, the pro the, uh, problem with the with the concentration on or with the talking with the people or the problem with the, with the heavy drugs they take ayahuasca do not take no more in my life do what do you think about this? What, what, do you can say no, something you take, about... You take ayahuasca once. I never did ayahuasca okay, once, if you, but I meet a couple feel, of people, yeah. If you feel the urge of doing it, I want do to it make, once. Yeah, for sure. And see what it has to give you. I, I each know one what of I want to different. reset. Yeah, yeah, each one of it is different. And really, once again, I take this opportunity to thank you all for coming together and creating this amazing, magical, beautiful experience of being together, a collective force. This is a really good example of humanity as a new way of humanity. Uh. Well, why didn't he want you to take uh, the path you did? My past? No, uh, if Buddha, uh, if Dalai Lama is enlightened, why didn't he want you to take uh, the path you did? That's a very good question. I really don't know. Dalai Lama's way is Dalai Lama's way. My way, for 16 lifetime, I also followed that way. I didn't want to be just boxed as a Buddhist or up in a monastery, locked up. When I was 18 years old, I did lust it over a woman. But my mind, we were kept so busy from 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock. Wake somebody up, you know, you know, sometimes you left somebody second in command and you went and had your cup of tea and they go, so, oh, 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 oh. You know. Yes, I mean, if you're studying the scriptures of how to be, well-being and all this, your mind has no time to think anything else. So I want my mind free. Like these paintings. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be, I want to be like you. <laughs> You know, maybe next time in Boom, you might see me in tattoos and a mohawk. <laughs> you know, it, it, is, it is the expression of being free. So really, and I think now I have one minute. Okay, one question. Who has one question? All right. All right, I have a question then. I have a question that why, why, why the human race, the corporate world don't understand love? So please, it is really my request I see so much love emitting from you all. Why don't you, I would really request you to go and feel confident, self-confident about yourself to express this love out there in the world. Boom is just a starting point. And 2012, this year is transition period. And I think on the second, I'm going to do 15 minutes of a ritual where I want to empower everybody to really understand their true self, who they are. You know, you really are not who you think you are. You really are not who you think others think you are. You are not just your physical body or the karmic life you live. You really are enlightened being. Look deep inside. Deep inside you, you will find this higher self, this soul, this spirit, 
which is pure light, pure, pure light, and is known as body of light. And that is what every meditators, all Buddhists are trying for, trying to find the difference between the physical body, the karmic body, and the body of light. And when you find the body of light, you are enlightened. So, really, you are all enlightened. Please try to remember that you are all enlightened. Find. And you can always communicate with me on cyberspace. And maybe little what I have known or what I have learned, I will try to share with you. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you.